Hey everybody, this is Kevin McFarland from The Art of Emergency Nursing, and you're listening to 30 Days to Being a Badass ER Nurse. In the next 30 days, I'm going to give you some quick tips and tricks to help you be a better ER nurse. And of course, as always, it's not just me you're going to hear from. I've recruited some of my friends to give you some of their tips and tricks so they can share their knowledge as well. So don't forget to subscribe so that you catch all the episodes. And if you find one of these tips and tricks are really helpful, give me a shout out on social media and share it with your friends. Let's get into today's tip. Have you ever heard the old phrase that you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with? I believe that's true. Oh, what am I thinking? I'm, I'm sorry. I got this all backwards. Welcome to the 30 day podcast challenge. 30 days to being a badass ER nurse. I'm your host, Kevin McFarlane, and you are listening to day 26. The month is almost over. I've been pretty consistent with this, so I'm pretty proud about that. So it's been it's been rough, but we've gotten through this together. Hopefully you're enjoying the 30-day podcast. I know I've been really enjoying uh, doing this for you. So hopefully you're you're getting a little something out of it. Now, I told you about the five people you spend the, 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 the five people you surround yourself with. And for me, I love having smart friends. I love having smart friends because smart friends are the ones who can remind you of the cool things you know and cool things you want to share, but you just forget. That's today's tip from my friend Nisa from over at the Q Word Podcast. She's got another tip, and it's just as good as the last one. Now, her tip is one of those tips that it should have been like in the top 10. It should have been like one of the first ones I did. It's super important. It's a cool trick that I teach ER nurses all the time. And I completely forgot about it. I can't believe I did that. But she remembered. So bonus points to Nisa. You're a badass. You're a badass ER nurse. And I appreciate you contributing to the show. Okay, with that said, here's the tip. Hey, Kevin, it's Nisa Hathaway. It's about 1.30 in the morning. I told you I was on time. Um, for you, I have a couple of tips for you. Uh, the first one is one I was taught in nursing school, probably the best thing I learned in nursing school. So if your emergency department is like mine, oftentimes you will get a call from the floor or the ICU to bring the ring cutter because someone's got a ring stuck on their finger. Maybe they've started to swell a little bit or maybe it's uh, grandma and grandpa and the ring hasn't come off in 50 years and now they need to, to take it off. When uh, when I go up there, I put the ring cutter in my pocket, but I also bring a piece of string. And our uh, sheets and linens are usually wrapped in string, and it's about the perfect length, about two feet is what you need. So when you get to the patient, they've probably tried to slide it off with lube and water and some other things. Make sure that you dry that finger really, really well so none of that um, lube is still on their finger. You're going to take the string and you're going to slide it under the ring toward the patient's hand so that you've got about two inches of string sitting in the palm of their hand on the underside of their hand, uh, the palmer aspect. If it's so tight that you can't get the string under, if you'll take a blunt fill needle and just gently um, guide it under the ring using that blunt fill, it should go nicely. Then you're going to take the other 22 inches or so of that ring and you're going to, or that string and you're going to wrap it around the finger just as tight as you can. And what you're doing is you're displacing any edema. And once you've got it wrapped really tightly, take the little tail that you have sitting on the palm and start unwinding what you just wound. And as you unwind it, that ring will roll right up the finger. Um, you'll have to do it probably two or three more times. The knuckle will be the trickiest piece, but this trick works 95% of the time. Um, and the ring cutter stays in your pocket. You've amazed your patient, their family members, and you've saved a beautiful heirloom ring from being cut. And looks like we got a call, so I'm going to call you back with a second tip. If you haven't tried that trick to get a ring off of a finger, I want you to try that next time you need it. That's a great tip. 
there's about a million videos of this uh, that you'll show you the process on YouTube if you want to check take a look at those videos. Uh, but I think Nisa explained it really well. It's a great way to get the ring off without cutting the ring because y'all know grandmas hate it when you cut their rings. So hope this tip helps. I hope you're enjoying the 30 day podcast. Don't forget to leave us a rating and review. That's really, really important. It's important that you do that. Our numbers have been through the roof with this 30 day podcast. So uh, please, now's the time to put a rating and review. And more importantly, share this podcast with your friends. I appreciate that. Thanks so much and have a great show. Thanks for listening to the Art of Emergency Nursing Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast and follow us on Facebook.